only mode. Very good evening, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. Welcome to our educational webinar, uh, the weekly one on Thursdays, of course, the 12th of December. We're going to take a look at oscillators exposed. And it's going to be fun because we have a lot of oscillators to discuss. So it's going to be a great time. But before we dive into all these types of oscillators, though, and how to uh, look at them and review them and analyze them, and use them for trading. First, of course, the risk disclaimer explaining that trading for exchange is considered high risk. It may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. So thank you for your attention on that. So once again, welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris Tarantala is with us as well. And today we're going to take a look at oscillator in Forex trading. What is an oscillator? why and when is it important, how can it be used. Today we're going to do it as follows. I'm going to uh, take a look at the awesome oscillator and uh, Talanta is going to take a look at some other oscillators. Here's the uh, explanation where the oscillators actually fit in. It's a, it's a leading in indicator in fact of type, right? Contrary to for example a lagging indicator. And uh, the oscillators are typically uh, types of uh, leading indicators that use the momentum of trend exhaustion, right? We can use them in, in ranges, for example. We can use them also to identify when a trend might be ending. Uh, so, for example, if you're bouncing up and down between two particular ranges, uh, levels, then uh, it's, it's very useful information when it reaches an oversold or overbought level, but also when it actually returns back uh, from overbought into the normal area, then that could be a confirmation maybe of the bounce off of that top or bottom of the range. Right? Now indeed with strong trends, of course they're dangerous and uh, we could see oversold or overbought levels for quite a while and they stay like that uh, until the, uh, the trend is over. That's of course always the job of the trader to def identify basically to define when there's a trend and when to know when to use more trending uh, indicators and when there is a range and when to use for example oscillators. So that's very important. Oscillators will not of course work in all environments just like trend will not work in all environments either. All right, But they're definitely useful information although they mirror price action quite closely. So I'll be talking about specific the oscillator and then I'll pass it over to Toronto who will be talking about all of these in more detail. For those of you who already know a lot about the awesome oscillator, I just ask for your patience for a couple of minutes where I go through uh, the awesome oscillator and then uh, we'll go through to the others. The awesome oscillator is something that I use uh, vigorously and a lot for those of you who do attend sometimes the live webinar, you know it's always at the bottom of my chart. Sometimes I, occasionally I add others, but this one is always there. It's a, it's a standard feature on my chart and it's just never gone, <laughs> almost. So what is it? Well, the Osmo Escalator is from Bill Williams. He is a, a, a very, very known trader, very good trader. He has his own indicators and you can find that on the MT4 platform of Admiral Markets. He has a separate group of of indicators, in fact. One of them is the awesome oscillator, and it takes the difference between simple moving averages uh, of the bar midpoints and divide them by two, 34 and 5. Now, that, in a way, is not so important because we have automatically all that information at the bottom. That's the nice thing of modern trading. You don't have to calculate and uh, write that all down on paper. What it means is that if you have, let me show it to you, in fact, at the bottom here you have the awesome oscillator, you see the green bars, that means the momentum, especially of course if it's above the, the middle line here, there's a zero line. Why? Because there's a zero right in the middle. If the bars are above the zero line, that tends to be bullish. If the bars are below the zero line, it tends to be bearish. Of course, if the bars are green and above the zero line, that is even more bu bullish. And if the bars are red and below zero line that is even more bearish. Of course here too there are exceptions. Look at this part right in here and that one right in here. Those are what you call retracement still for more upside. So even though you get sometimes breaks through that zero line, those could still be retracements. That's why we still need to do multiple time frame analysis and, and do our other analysis because we can see that for example this chart pattern is a bull, bull flag. 
And even though the histogram could be below the zero line and red, doesn't mean that isn't a bull flag as yet. And there is the potential for that breakout to the upside, right? So, so to a certain degree, it's, it's very important information, but we still have to do our own analysis on that and make the entire uh, picture uh, analysis of the currency. But in general, it does work like that. You can see here it stays above the zero line. We do get a very bullish move here too, uh, here too, etc. Right. So in general, it does work very nicely. So that's good information. But that's not all. There are other oscillators. I don't use those that uh, frequently. With the os accelerator oscillator, in fact. Um, gives also some certain similar information, a bit different, because you can see if you compare the two to the Osmos awesome oscillator, which is at the top, the accelerator is the AC in the middle. You can see, for example, here where we have on the pound dollar 50 minute chart, this is from yesterday, we had divergence here. Uh, no, sorry, uh, here. That is more visible. These, these highs and lows are more extreme on the Osmos awesome oscillator uh, sorry, accelerator oscillator than the awesome oscillator. All right, so here too, they show a bit more information. Here too, they show more clear divergence, for example, than on the awesome oscillator. The gator alligator is, in fact, particularly interesting when they are growing like this. When basically the gator is getting hungry and its mouth is opening, that's when there's a trend. When the mouth is closing, basically there's no trend. And when it's flat like that, it's sleeping, basically. Roughly speaking, that's what you can read out of the gator. I'm going to focus on the awesome oscillator because that's my, my really the oscillator I use the most. So uh, Basically, the change in the color, of course, indicating the momentum and the crossing of the zero line, we talked about that. We can use the awesome oscillator for divergence and convergence, just like a MACD. If you have, for example, there's a special webinar on that, a separate webinar, so I encourage you to look at that. But if you have, for example, a price making a higher high, but the oscillator is making a higher low, um, sorry, higher high, but the awesome oscillator is making a lower high, that's divergence, right? There's no, the oscillator is not confirming the high of price. We can use it for LED wave counts, for distinguishing separate legs, and swing highs and swing lows. We can use it for fibs. The minimum retracement requirements of uh, you know, the minimum requirements of retracement, and it's also needed for my AO four-hour strategy, which is explained in an interweek webinar that you can find um, on the video archive as well. So let's dive into these points just quickly. This was talked about in general, um, so we can skip this one. That's the same chart, in fact. We can go right away to this one, divergence and convergence. Let's take a look at that on the previous chart, in fact. One more time, you can see here, what do we have here? Price is making a higher high between these two green circles. But if you look at the awesome oscillator, eh, no higher high there. And we get a sturdy three-wave correction right before we do continue back up. That's one of the things that the awesome oscillator can do is predict that divergence and convergence. Once again, there's a separate webinar on that topic. Elliott wave counts. Always, wave three should have the most powerful AO reading. Wave three must have that. If it doesn't, it's not a wave three. That alone could be useful and valuable information with regard to the wave counts. And for those of you who follow the wave counts, um, by all means, please continue. But if you don't, there is a wave count, by the way, on um, on Idemo Markets website, of course, at the wave analysis section. Okay, so distinguishing separate legs. Oh, there's one more point here, by the way. The wave four is usually shallow retracement, but it does mean that the AO goes back to the zero line. So if the AO hasn't gone back to the zero line yet, uh, it could still be part of wave three. But if it has returned or is close to returning, it's probably wave four. Wave five usually has divergence with wave three. Those are the most important things with the oscillator connected to wave counts. Distinguishing the separate legs, also very important. If you look at this, for example, you can see here price is back to the zero line, and here price is back to the zero line. That means that this upside here, that is one wave. One wave, one correction, 
and that are wave up. Every time it goes back to the zero line. Those are separate legs and waves or swing highs and swing lows. Once you know where the swing highs and swing lows are, it's also, of course, easier to place the fibs, although once you get a bit more experience, it goes pretty naturally. You can see just with the eye what the most logical swing high and swing low would be and where you could best put the fib. Or you could look at fib targets, for example, uh, to before moving the fib. Let's see. Uh, Yes, so if the oscillator is still above the zero line, you can zoom in and fib various legs. What I mean with this is, is that one wave up, you could have several waves within that move. So if you're in that green up, you can zoom into one lower time frame and try to fib these lower swing high swing lows that are still part of that one move up of a higher time frame. Right? But if you see divergence then on the lower time frame, if you see on the, in the blue, divergence between the top tops, then we might want to zoom out one chart because then we could get a retracement uh, of the green arrow there and we could see a bigger correction of the entire green, not only of the smaller swing high swing lows of the blue section. Here's an example. Uh, your yen one hour chart, we see for example uh, divergence between the tops here, right? And we see a correction here, which is a retracement. We see some, actually some hidden divergence maybe, and continuation to the upside on the lower time frame. This is a retracement for more upside. You can also see that the divergence takes time to play out. It doesn't happen right away, right? There's no effect, not always an immediate effect, the moment you break a top or bottom. Uh, this is the four hour chart and you can see that this red box is equal to that red box on the left and you can see that basically what happened here is that this is just trending in fact on the four hour chart that was this move here the first green arrow just a consolidation on the four hour chart and then a breakout very minor consolidation a very weak sideways consolidation and continuation breakout after that to the upside. So that was a, a pretty nice pattern for breakout trading to the upside, especially because this is such a strong impulse, and such a strong oscillator momentum. When you have a strong momentum like that, the likelihood of a top or bottom with such an oscillator reading being broken is high. And that's why I have a lot of confidence in certain breakout trades because I know that this is, this is such a big oscillator momentum that the break of that top or bottom is very high. So I'm already hunting to catch a good, a good position to position myself in for a trade that could materialize and capitalize, sorry, on this break of that top or bottom, in this case top. Because I know that, that those statistics are very high. What is high? You have to look basically and make it relative to uh, this is high compared to, for example, the previous one. You have to, if, if, the, if the, the current one is lower than the previous one in an uptrend, then that's not high. It has to be higher than the immediate environment, at least. Your dollar for hour chart. You can see here uh, how every move to the zero line on this four hour chart provides a good opportunity to go short in this downtrend. And when this is below the zero line, you have probably good opportunities on the lower time frame as this is trending to the downside. It moves back to the zero line on this four hour chart actually representing retracements on this four hour chart. And of course there are other retracements here and here but those are more one hour retracements within the four hour down move. You can also use it as a minimum retracement requirement. I talked about that only when the AO has, that has gone back to the zero line could we say that the retracement on that time frame has been met if it does make a retracement but it bounces and continues with the trend prior to hitting the, the, the zero line on that time frame, it's actually a retracement of a lower time frame. So one more time, if the AO doesn't go all the way back to the zero line but the trend still continues 
it's a retracement of a lower time frame. And if you then zoom in to a lower time frame, you'll probably see the oscillator had gone back to the zero line on that lower time frame. Let's see, once the AO has gone back to the zero line, then um, you, we know that the currency has paused sufficiently and retraced sufficiently um, for more continuation, most likely. How do we know that the oscillator is in for a retracement? Most of the time, let me show you an example, most of the time what you'll see, what you want to pay attention to is that if it's trending like this, it's still strong. What you're looking for is actually the second kind of kickback here and here and here and here when the hump starts to really move up like here for example and here that's when most of the time you could expect the oscillator to go back to the zero line when it's full force going down not yet and still even if it's even if the hump is going back it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, most of the times you you'll be in a retracement mode though that's 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 for sure that's when you recognize it the most like here for example you can see if you can look at that there is that retracement and back to the zero line it goes alright um, here for example so that's how you can recognize it take a look at the webinar on intra-week strategies that explains the uh, AO strategy I explained if you want on the four hour chart and I think that uh, I just have a few more tips Use the AO on multiple time frames, definitely uh, very useful. There's also a multiple time frame webinar, by the way. AOs with Fibonacci levels very strong, especially in the trending mode, especially in the trending mode, of course, with emphasis. Uh, let's see, if the AO is returning to the zero line, and we do, we are in retracement mode, but we still expect trend continuation, one tip is to look for divergence on a lower time frame. Let's say we're in uptrend on the four hour chart, and the AO is retracing to the zero line and we're getting some retracement like that, what we can do is then zoom in, what we can do is then zoom into a lower time frame and uh, look for divergence between the retracement bottoms. We can also look for a target, if we fib this blue move, look for the fib retracement and target there which could be the bouncing spot from our upside then. And once the histogram starts to turn on the lower time frame, when those things have happened, then you're probably moving back into the direction of the trend. Got some examples here, for example. You can see the retracement here, giving the kickback to the zero line here, the move back. And if we probably put fibs on this down move, we would have some targets here, but I don't have it. This is a blank chart. But um, once the zero line crosses here and moves into green, you can see the trend continues to the upside. Here too, the dip to the zero line for more upside. And that wraps up the part of the awesome oscillator and the Bill Williams. And Talanto is going to continue with other kinds of oscillators, in fact. Let me pass over actually the presentation. Yeah, thank you. Oh, let's see. Okay. Here. Thank you very much, Chris, for such good introduction. Yeah, nice stuff with awesome oscillator. I don't use it uh, much, but I know that it's it can be very, very good. It although it's it's Bill Williams and his chaos theory proved that already. So today we are gonna talk about uh oscillators but oscillators that are by default uh, put in an MT4 platform. So they're integrated in MT4 platform. You will see I will tell you what you can do with those oscillators, each and every function of it. And after the new year, uh, after new year, me and Chris are gonna special we are gonna have special webinar about about uh, advanced oscillators. So those that cannot be found in MT4 platform. So 
What are Forex indicators? You already know what indicator is. Just a quick overview and definition. Forex indicator is a mirror of price action. Oscillator is an indicator also. Indicator is a mathematical calculation based on a price. Also, also statistics you those represent statistics used to measure current conditions as well as to forecast financial or economic trends. The main purpose of using indicators is to define trend, to confirm a trend and entry, to place stop loss and target price. With oscillators you can do more things. They will help you in many other things concerning trading. So what are Forex oscillators? As Chris said, and I will repeat it, oscillators are synchronous or anticipatory indicators. That means that they can predict, I, I can say, price action. Because those are leaning indicators, they mirror the price action itself. But they also show us the moments of trend exhaustion and define possible turning points. Okay? We use it not just to discover overbought or oversold conditions, but we also use it to foresee breaking point in a price movement. Oscillators should be present on every chart. They tend to generate false signals, but usually in strong trends. So, when you see that the trend, trend is very strong, don't go on, don't go just with overbought and oversold conditions. Why? Because uh, oscillators can remain in overbought or oversold, popularly known as oboes. They can remain in oboes for more than a day, even a week. Oscillators provide signals about trend changes and trend strength. And oscillators as I said, are mathematically derived transformations of price and on graphs they mirror price action. When the lines start to move apart from oscillator, it can be a signal of losing momentum. MACD is an example and I will show you how you can use MACD to measure momentum. So, MACD can be used as momentum gauge. Okay? Standard MT4 oscillators, which are built by default in every MT4 platform, are Stochastic, RSI, MACD, CCI. Those are most popular and most widely used. In one of our next webinars, we will talk about D-Trend, we will talk about Bull, Bears, about Elder, Rays, Oscillator, about force index oscillator, some oscillators that are not so common but also can be useful. But for now, just stick with those. Stochastics, RSI, MACD, CCI because you don't need others to trade successfully. Those indicators can help you a lot. They can give you many useful, a lot of useful information and they can provide you with good divergence and entry signals. So let's start it. First, with stochastic oscillator, George Lane in 1950s created the oscillator. As you can see, when you open a stochastic oscillator window, you can see that it comprises of percent %K, percent %D, and slowing period. Standard setting is 533, some use 833, some use 1473. But let's say that we can stick now, just for showcase purposes, with 533 fast moving stochastic oscillator. Back in time, we didn't have slow line, slowing field, so oscillator cons consisted most of K and D period. And when the, this kind of oscillator first was introduced to MT4 platform, it was called slowing os uh, stochastic oscillator. So don't be uh, don't be confused with that. Slowing stochastic or stochastic oscillator is the same because it has a slowing field in it. Okay. These are standard settings for for stochastic, and you can many different many different uh, systems use different settings. 
So it doesn't matter now because we don't talk uh, we don't talk about systems now. We are talking about oscillators. So standard settings you can change it however you like. Try to experiment, and also you we can see that there are also overbought and oversold lines 80 and 20, namely 80 and 20. If you use these settings, 5, 3, 3, 4, 3, 3, 7, 3, 3, whatever, slowing in D period, when, when, when those periods are the same and K period can be a variable, stochastics will uh, be smoothed like this. The bigger the number is, the slower the stochastic is and less signals it tends to create. So for fast moving markets, we can use 533, 1313, 813. So they tend to generate many signals. As I said, the upper line is 80, the, the lower line is 20. So basically when we see those lines, blue and red, over the top, we can say that the pair, the market, what we are going to trade is overbought. When we see those two lines below the 20, we can say that market is oversold. So if the market goes up here, we are wanna we usually want to take short setups. If the market goes around there, we need to be prepared for long setups. As I said, sometimes this condition can last more than a day, more than a week sometimes. Not in, in rare occasions, but it can last. But yet again, when we see stochastics in overbought or, over, or, on, or in oversold zone, we need to be very cautious about trend trading. So soon we need to find signals for counter trend, okay? So we can use it in conjunction with price action, trend lines, with other tools which can help us to define momentum and a possible trend collapse. Okay. There are three ways to use stochastic oscillator. The first is divergence. The standard form of reversal, the very first form of reversal of price action. Uh, we are not going to talk about uh, divergence special because we had a divergence webinar and you know how you can trade divergence with MACD with awesome oscillator. The same thing goes with every oscillator. You can, you can trade divergence with MACD, with RSI, with awesome, with CCI. My favorite method is of course MACD, as you all know. But also you can try to find maybe stochastic divergence or CCI or RSI will suit you, suit you better than MACD or awesome. So if the price is making lower lows but stochastic is making higher lows, we can say that that is regular bullish divergence. If the price is making high high but stochastic is making lower high, we have regular bearish divergence. As we know, regular divergence is counter trend. Okay, if we if we see regular bullish divergence and we are in bearish trade, that is a signal for us to exit the trade and potentially reverse the trade. If we see bearish divergence, that usually means that we need to exit from our bullish setup and try to find new trend that is bearish. Hidden divergence is trend continuation and that uh, those represent signals for a trend continuation. So hidden bullish is when price is making high low but stochastic is making lower low. You don't need to have series of higher highs and higher lows or higher lows and lower lows. You just need one higher low and one lower low. So that is why we have A prior to higher. So a higher low, that means one higher low and one low low, that is enough for divergence. Of course, when we don't take any trades or, or try to spot divergence on leaving candle, candle needs to close and then we can see there are many useful indicators which plots automatically 
the versions on your chart so you don't need to search manually. The thing is that hidden divergence signals a trend continuation. So stochastics can be used for divergence, also for entries. Entries are uh, entries come in form of percent %k and percent %d crossings. When the percent %k comes from above and crosses percent %d, then we have a sell signal. If k comes from beneath and crosses d, then we have a buy signal. If this happens in below or above any zone, the signal is much stronger. This is the simplest method, and you know that many, many scalping signals, scalping systems, and many trade uh, systems systems use stochastic as an entry indicator. So this form of uh, movement, usually when price when stochastics cross 20, we are looking for long setups. And then we need to have, let's say, a bullish trend. So when stochastics come from above to below and then crosses uh, above 20, we, are, we want to have bullish entry. Let's say that the trend is bearish, then we want stochastics to see from this point to this point. And when trend is bearish, as stochastics cross 80 from above, this is our entry point, okay? So one of stochastics example and one of entries, how we can make entries, is this. There are many systems which use stochastic as entry point. And I intentionally say systems because usually those are mechanical systems that you can trade by simply looking at at price action of stochastics and few more indicators which signifies price action that given time frame. What I want to say is for beginner traders this sometimes this is enough. Now, I'm not saying that this setting is the optimal setting, but I can say that stochastics can give a nice introduction to Forex price action to new traders. Also, there are many good systems which actually use a couple of moving averages, stochastics, and MACD for entries. Stochastics can be used with various settings, but the faster the settings are, stochastics will gen generate more signals. Okay? One of the strategies I like to showcase is 31.3 and 8.1.3 overlaid stochastics. You know that already if you follow our webinars, okay? Now, also, we can trace stochastics as counter trend direction. So we can just use stochastic as obos, overbought, oversold indicator, not as entry signal, as in above example. So in this example, we don't use it as entry signal. So if you use it as obos indicator, you need to use additional rules for entries. Keep in mind, though, that stochastics can be overbought or oversold for days. So that is why you need to use additional filters. So let's say that, for example, we have, let's say we can take a look at this example. We have Bollinger Bands, we have Stochastics, which are above 80, and we have Dark Cloud Pattern at the top, at the top of Bollinger Bands. So we have Bearish Pattern at the top of Bollinger Band, we have Stochastic above 80, so we are gonna try to enter. So our entry signal would be based ab around this pattern, this pattern, but also this is additional filter for taking a short trade. In other example, for example, we have bearish market, but the thing is we have come to a nice support around Bollinger Band, an important pivot point. 
then we can spot a hammer just bouncing off that Bollinger Band, an important pivot point, and also our stochastics give us oversold condition. So we are going to base our trade around the hammer, but additional filters will be Bollinger Bands and stochastics in oversold territory. So one of, of nice usage of, of stochastic oscillator is good usage is counter trend direction. So usually when we see that stochastic is in overbought, oversold zone, we will use uh, additional tools for entries. Be it price action, be it, I don't know, CCI indicator, be whatever suits you and whatever your method says. I tend, I like to look uh, at candlesticks formation when I trade around patterns and sometimes I just need to take a look at stochastics to see if the market is in overbought or oversold territory. But only when I make counter trend decisions. Okay. Next thing is RSI, Relative Strength Index, a well-known indicator. Wells Weidel created it to display the strength behind the move and to spot a possible exhaustion. 70 and 30 are most important lines. They indicate overboard or oversold conditions for use with divergence. So uh, this is all my opinion. So I'm, I'm not saying that uh, each or I don't know every trader uses this. But, uh, I, I started trading Forex market some, well, let's say it's all over five years ago and I have studied those indicators a lot especially RSI index and if you follow my post on Euro dollar uh, Forex factory thread maybe you remember the time when I was trading RSI RSI methods and to be honest they can be good but I personally use it only with divergence setups Overbought oversold conditions only be divergence. So I know a lot about RSI indicator, as and I can say that it can be effective if used correctly, but not as just an overbought oversold indicator. The I want to say use it with divergence as divergence tool. It can be really powerful. Uh, we also can remove 70 and 30 and add 50 level. That means that we are going to look at a trend gauge. If relative strength index RSI is above 50, we say that market is bullish. If it's below 50 level, we said market is bearish. It's lower than stochastics and more reliable for divergence. So if I, let's say, if I didn't use MACD, I would sure use RSI, my opinion. This is example of RSI divergence, so we can see the nice bearish setup after the divergence. But the thing is that if we spot the divergence happens above 70, like in this example, we can say the divergence is stronger. The same is for 30. In this example, we can see that divergence started at above 70 zone and RSI started to leave 70 zone and that means it's a strong sell signal. The higher time frame is the stronger the signal is. So divergence with overbought and oversold zones. And also trend strength. As I said when RSI is above below 50, the trend on that particular time frame is bearish. While RSI, RSI is above 50, we can say that the trend is bullish. So some of the systems and strategies use just this one because this is an advanced method of RSI. You can spot divergence for counter trend trade and hidden divergence for continuations. In this example you're just looking at the trend strength, trend strength gauge. 
So while RSI is below 50, the trend is bearish, while RSI is above 50, assume that the trend is bullish. Usually, we apply 14 period of RSI setting for our calculations. Okay? MACD, my favorite indicator. As you know, Gerald Apple found it. MACD, former MACD, consisted of only one line and I need to say that I always use, I always use, almost always, 12, 26, 9 settings, the four settings of MACD. But uh, Gerald didn't know that his indicator will soon be improved as MACD2 line or real MACD. And uh, uh, today I use only MACD2 line or real MACD, it's the same. MACD is lagging, but also it is momentum indicator. It has been used widely by many traders. It's a great tool for divergence and multiple time frame analysis. Zero line on MACD is momentum gauge. It measures momentum strength. That is called water line or zero line on MACD. There are two most important ways to use MACD. I never use crosses to trend to generate entry points. Never. The things I use MACD and I suggest using it is divergence and momentum. Divergence setups are basically the same setups we use with every with every oscillator, but since MACD is used widely by by traders all over the world, we can say that MACD has important part in our trading, just because many traders use it. Divergence, the same thing as with general divergence, as you know, lower lows, lower highs, higher highs, so the same thing applies to each escalator, and MACD for me is the best of all indicators for determining divergence. Maybe there are better indicators, I don't know, maybe awesome is better, I don't know, but the thing is I use MACD for divergence and so far it's been good if I want to trade divergence setup. Momentum, of course. Momentum is, after the divergence, the most important aspect of MACD. Maybe, I, I cannot say that it's more important, but it has the same importance for me as divergence. Now pay close attention. When blue line goes above zero line, we can tell that there is a momentum on a given chart and time frame. While blue is above zero line, momentum is bullish. When blue crosses red, the opposite way, but still above zero line, the momentum is lost and there is a retracement underway. If we trade trend, we don't want to enter any trades while there is momentum, so we want to see the retracement first. That's why we use multiple, multiple time frame analysis. We usually want to enter the very first time frame that, that does not have any momentum, but it's still above if we trade bullish zero line. Vice versa is for short trades. As you can see in this picture, in this point, we have sell momentum because blue line crosses below the water line. In this point, we have still, we don't have, we have lost the momentum, but we are still bearish and retracement is underway. In this point we have buy momentum, in this point we have lost momentum but we have retracement and the trend is still bullish. In this point we have sell momentum, mind this is a daily chart so just for showcase purposes, this is buy momentum and this is loss momentum of momentum that is called retracement. So usually when, we, when I do make the trading and analysis, I want to see if 4-hour has 
momentum. Then if it has momentum, I move to one hour time frame and see if there is a momentum. If there is a momentum on one hour, I watch for a 15 momentum. And if I see this, then that means that I will use M15 for my entry because there is no momentum and there is retracement undergoing on M15 but the other time frames align especially one hour and four hour so one of on one of my one of the things how I use MACD now CCI the commodity channel index it's an oscillator originally introduced by Donald Lambert it's very popular amongst traders very popular the main levels are minus, minus, minus 100 and plus 100. That means that we have also those overbought and oversold level zones, but we don't use it like that. We can trade even if bullish momentum is above 100 and bearish momentum is below 100. So we can try to exploit breakout trades. I will show you that. It is widely used in scalping purposes on lower time frames. There are some methods. There are some methods that can be used, especially and very, very, very successfully on lower time frames with those settings. Okay. As I said, it also can be used for breakouts with trend lines applied to it. As with many oscillators, if not all, it can be used as a divergence tool, CCI. So, usage of CCI can be applied with four different setups. I will show you now. Overbore, oversold, divergence, trend gauge, and breakouts. Overboard and oversold conditions are called OBOS. Minus 100 and plus 100 levels indicate possible reversal. As with other overboard oversold indicators, this means that there is a large probability that the price will correct itself after going above 100 and below minus 100. It should be used in conjunction with other techniques for this purpose. Okay? For scaling purposes, we set a constant 14 to ensure that approximately 70 to 80 percent of CCI values would fall between minus 100 and plus 100. CCI fluctuates above and below zero. The percentage of CCI values that fall between plus 100 and minus 100 will depend on the number of periods used. This is the default period, 14, and we use it often. And shorter CCI will be more volatile with smaller percentage of values between plus 100 and minus 100. Conversely, the more periods used to calculate CCI, the higher the percentage of values between plus 100 and minus 100. So if you find a strategy which uses CCI, usually it will have 14 period applied for overboard and oversold conditions. So we don't use it to enter the trades like stochastics, we just use it to spot a possible reversal around those levels. But it's not so efficient as OBOS indicator as stochastic is, but it's very efficient if we use breakout and entries with CCI. Divergence, the same as MACD as RSI divergence. It's stronger if divergence is above 100 or minus 100 levels below minus 100. You can see that this divergence happens when the price is above 100. Daily chart, you can see what happened after the divergence. A perfect, perfect example of continuation, hidden bearish divergence, continuation of downtrend. So the same thing applies with all indicators, all oscillators, divergence. Trend. If CCI is above 50, we consider it bullish. This is the example of RSI, but it's the same. CCI is just neglect the RSI. It's the same with CCI. 
you just remove 100 and minus 100 and then 50. On some scalping systems, this can be used effectively. But usually, you don't need that. You just need to spot those 100 and minus 100 divergences and breakouts. Okay? And now, breakouts with trend lines. You know where we talked about, talked about, maybe this is, for me, maybe this is the most important aspect of CCI. And I have many traders which ask me how we can apply uh, indicator when trading breakouts. Now, pay attention to this. CCI has a perfect peaks and valleys in it. The other indicators, those are peaks and valleys you can see here. Other indicators except RSI don't have it. These are very, very nice aspects of CCI. Those valleys, those peaks. You can draw trend lines, basically. Channels. Everything within CCI. You can also do it with, uh, you, don't, you cannot do it with MACD, because MACD is another form of, or of scalator. But with RSI, we can see RSI, we can do that, but you see how RSI is a little bit whipsaw. It can be good, but not that good as, as CCI. See, RSI has some whipsaws, many, many, many those peaks. It goes like this, so it's not so good for, for those kind of trading, tra uh, trading setups. This is, for me, this is way better because, you see, the price action, it's not that, the, the, because CCI is linear indicator, it mirrors price action. It's not that whip, so we have this, but we also have this. Then we have another peak, then we have another valley. So these peaks and these valleys can be used for determining trend lines for for charting trend lines and for determining breakout points okay breakout points in this example we can see how we can use it to our advantage breakout with trend lines so breakout with trend lines we can see that in this example we have drawn a trend line. I will try to correct this. Oh, sorry. I will try to correct this. Let's see if I can correct it. Yeah. I will try to correct this a little bit because it's it's a lot this is way better. Now, take a look at this trend line. The trend line is drawn from course bottom to top. And you can see that in many examples CCI acts a lot faster than price action. So this is classic trend line break. CCI broke the trend line first. You see? Followed by price. This trend line is very, very, it's excellent. It's even better sometimes than price itself. You see how trend line has been drawn? It connects two peaks, the bottom and this up to the top. Two peaks. And then what happened? The pri first CCI broke at 100 level, indicating possible reversal. At the same time, we have drawn a trend line around here and now we wait for the price to break. At this point we have breakout to the downside but the thing is the CCI broke the trend line first and then afterwards the price started to break down. So you can drive the price from here to there and then even more because CCI is falling down. This is classic trend line break. This is not a breakout. Uh, next on, in the, on the same chart uh, especially lower time frames can be used effectively with, with these kind of techniques. Trend line with breakouts. You can see that CCI breakout is 
happening when CCI uh, is above 100. So we can try to place trend line at the top. You see, you just need to have some charting experience and screen time for this. And when CCI goes above 100, there is a signal for us to be prepared for buying into resistance because we want to tr trade breakout. Okay? So at this point, you see trend line, trend line, mirror of the price action. In this point, this is not perfect example, but somewhere around there. CCI broke above 800, so we need to be prepared for a possible breakout of this trend line. So this is the first signal for us. This is the first signal for us to be prepared to go long. And this candle, happy trigger trade, can be exploited and also breakout, pullback continuation here. But the most important thing is CCI is still above 100 in this point. CCI is still above 100. Trend line has been broken. Trend line has been broken. And we go up. So trend line break with CCI above or below 100 or minus 100 is a great way to your breakout strategy. So this should be all about those indicators which are integrated oscillators, which are integ in integrated in MT4. Uh, as I said, we will have additional webinar in January about uh, those oscillators that are not covered now. We don't have uh, so we, we are out of time now, but also we need to cover it thoroughly. There are many not many, but there are few others which we want to show you that can be useful. But for now, stick with those that are integrated on MT4 platform. Stochastic, MACD, RSI, and CCI. These breakouts with CCI can be very effective. Also, this can be also effective. CCI divergence, overbought over, so, so, so. MACD for me very effective momentum and divergence and of course with RSI you can have great overbought and oversold divergence setups and excellent entries with stochastic so each of those indicators has its own own strengths and weaknesses but I think that I have presented you very best of it so you know what you can and what you should look at when you're putting on your chart. So if you have any questions, you can, you can ask us if no ultimate oscillator. Yeah, we can cover it in, in some of our, in, an, in another webinar concerning advanced oscillators. So we will talk about ultimate oscillator, no problem. Uh, of course, don't forget to visit our webinar schedule. We will have weekly Forex recap on Monday. This last session was extremely good if you traded those setups. Then, of course, Ask Data Trading with Chris, Live Trading Lab, then News Trading, this is something new which I will present you how you can trade news not every news but some important news and then we will see a special flashback on 19 of December so guys try to use this knowledge to your advantage we will have many more surprises to come after the new year so be sure to like us on Facebook, like Admiral Marcus, follow us on Twitter and other social networks. And I wish you a very, very happy week with many, many green pips. If you don't have any further questions, we will conclude this webinar, of course. And Chris, if you have anything to say, now is the time because I will <laughs> call it a day. <laughs> And yes. Yeah, this webinar is recorded.
Goody good. Seems that everything is clear. That's perfect. Yep. Well, next week, we're indeed looking forward to our flashback of 2013. That will be fun, I believe. So when will it be posted? i not sure exactly. I Probably think that, tomorrow or Monday, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it will be posted uh, tomorrow. But surely I will I will now uh, share the webinar recording with with uh, Admiral Market staff, and I think they will post it tomorrow. Probably, maybe maybe today. I don't know, but that will be very soon. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. I guess we'll wrap it up, right? T. Wrap it up. Call it a day. So. Yes, we will probably. Alrighty, <laughs> sounds good. Yes, indeed. Okay, guys. Perfect. Thank, Thank you so you much. Very much. Have Thank a you. Great weekend. Uh -huh. Cheers. Cheers and bye bye. Thank you.